was eyes that see and ears that hear and a heart that understand in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we come humbly before you and we ask, O oh Lord, that you will forgive us for starting late in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 All right, let's be seated. Um, a sincere apologies for starting so, so late. Um, may the Lord have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, today I will be doing a topic that um, aligns with our series, Walking as Sons of God. Uh, maybe I should say that I will be doing this as an addendum to that series. And I, I just want us to pay attention. Um, I will particularly be focusing on one thing. And I'm believing the Holy Spirit to help us both in communication and in our understanding. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's turn our Bible with me to Galatians chapter 4. And I will take verse 1. Galatians chapter 4. I've read this passage in one of the previous teachings here. I read from the King James. It says, Now I say that the heir as long as he is a child differeth nothing from a servant though he be lord of all. Now, here the Bible is telling us that the ear and the ear basically is like what we call the next of king. Is the one who has been designed or apportioned to inherit the belongings, the estate of another person. It says, but as long as he remains a child, he says, it does not differ from a servant. Of course, we should know that there is a difference between being a child and being a servant. And being a ear is superior to just being a child. Yet, he says that so far the ear remains a child. He says there is no difference between that child, between that heir and a servant. Now, if you watch carefully the choice of word there, the construction of this verse suggests that the heir may not necessarily be a child just by age. Amen. Apostle Paul wrote that while I was a child, he says what? I behave like a... He says now that I am ad an adult or that I am old, we say I put away childish things. Amen. Amen. Now that means that you may be an adult physically but be a child in character. Be a child in understanding. Be a child in knowledge. Be a child in wisdom. Amen. For those of us who understand Yoruba, you know there is something Yoruba people will say, Agbaya. That means, see, that expression in English literally means old fool. When you call somebody an old fool, that means looking at you physically, a level of intelligence a level of wisdom is expected. But having dealt with you, we have come to that conclusion that wisdom is not found where it is expected to be found. Amen. 
So an ear can become, an ear can remain a servant forever. Can remain like a servant forever. He says there is no difference between the ear and a servant for as long as that ear remains a child. Now that means that if there is an ear, it is expected that that ear grows up in a certain way and in a certain manner. And you will realize that people are usually very particular about raising people who are expected to replace them. Be it in the family or even in businesses. Amen. Amen. So, for example, if a man owns a multi-billion naira business and he is raising someone to take over that business after him such that that legacy continues, whether that person is, is direct by bio biological child or not, you will realize that there is a level of being intentional that is devoted into raising that person. Amen. And it's even the more intentional when that person is a biological child. If you've seen rich, big people, you will realize that when they begin to raise their children, especially with the intention that these children are going to take over whatever they are doing from them, you will see that a lot of effort goes into it. Amen. So, it is expected of the heir to grow up in all aspects. To grow up and to become like the one whom is supposed to take after. Amen. Amen. And it is the same way. The whole concept of an ear is that you want to you want to replicate yourself, you want to duplicate yourself in another person. Amen. Amen. That as much as possible, your intentions, your ideologies, your wills, your mentality your knowledge are being passed down to that person are we together now as believers in christ the same is expected of us the same ephesians chapter 4 if you check verse 19 Apostle Paul says, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Amen. But that's not the point. He says he travails, verse 19. He says he travails until Christ is what? Is formed in them. The forming or the formation of Christ in a man means that the principles, the ideologies of Christ are now resident in that person. That you are looking for a man who reflects Christ. You are looking for a man who has embodied Christ and that person becomes the reference point. Amen. Amen. So he's saying that I travel until Christ be formed in you. Now that traveling is a process of impartation. A process of passing down of knowledge. Passing down of ideology. Passing down of understanding. Passing down of everything that makes Christ Christ. So he says, I travail until Christ be formed in you. 
until you become an exact image of Christ. Until you become a replica of the Lord Jesus. Now, let me begin to delve into the core of what I want to communicate in this message. Physically speaking, to know a man, to know a man, the easiest way and the best way really is to move close to that man and examine his words, his ways, and his doings. Amen. Amen. One of the best ways to know a man is through his words. Amen. Amen. The Bible makes us to understand that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does what? The mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does what? It speaks. It is possible for a man to pretend Amen. And that is why I put together that you should examine his words, his ways, and his doings. If you stay around a man enough and you have engaging conversations with him, you will begin to know the content of his heart. Amen. When you meet wicked people, their words are and their actions will tell you. And, and of course, it's straightforward. When you meet a man whose words and actions are not matching up, then that person is living in pretense. Amen. When you meet a man who says, this is the way, but he himself is going this way, you know that there is something not adding up. Amen. Amen. A man's word and his actions are supposed to match up, except in cases of pretense. When you move close to a man enough, you will know by his words and by his actions the kind of man that he is. Amen. Amen. You will begin to know what the person stands for. You will begin to know what the person represents. You will begin to know the value system of that person as you continue to interact. Amen. So the word of a man gives you an opportunity to know the man. And I believe that we should all have at least some people like that that if they tell you so so person said so so thing you will before even before meeting that person you will cast doubt over the fact that that person can do act or speak in a certain way amen there are people that if they tell you they do certain good you will doubt whether that good is truly done or whether it is done with an ulterior motive. Amen. Amen. And there are people that, if they say they do something that is bad, you can doubt it. Are you sure it's the same person you are talking about? Are we getting it? So, the, 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 the word of a man is usually a portrayer of the mind of that person, of the art of that person, of the value that the person holds there. Amen. Amen. And so it is in the kingdom of God. There are certain systems that God has put in place for us as believers to know him. One of them, and chief among them, that everybody has access to, is the word of God. Amen. Amen. 
that we must come to the point of knowing God by his word. Amen. And as a matter of fact, even when you have claimed to hear God or see something from God or come to understand, this, understand something about God, by any other means, the most trusted way to vet what you have come to believe is the word of God. That when you you, 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 you say you slept, you saw a vision, whether you slept or not, you saw a vision or you had a revelation, that you bring that which, which you have seen side by side with the word of God. And whatever it is that you are seeing, must, if it is from God, must be in sync with the word of God. Amen. That whatever value system, whatever action you are about to take, that when you check and it comes at loggerhead, it comes standing against the word of God, you are ready to put that thing aside and hold what the word of God says to be true. Amen. Amen. So the word of God speaks expressly the mind and the precepts of God as it relates to our dealings here on earth. Amen. It gives us the boundary within which God expects us to operate here on earth. Whether to in dealing with God himself or in dealing with fellow mankind and all that God has created. Amen. Amen. It's important that we come to this point where, like the psalmist says, Psalm 119 verse 105, where the word of God is the lamp onto our path and a light onto our feet. Amen. That means that the, 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 the word of God is the guiding principle of our actions. Amen. Let's read that. Psalm 119 verse 105. Psalm 119 I want the lamp onto my feet. Okay. And a light onto my path. Okay. No. I, the, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And somebody will be wondering how does the word become lamp and become light? Amen. Amen. How does the word become lamp? And it becomes light. John chapter 1. The gospel according to John. John was writing. And in an attempt to introduce Jesus. He went back to the beginning of time. And he gave a description. Of what he is seen in the beginning. Don't forget that John was living in the middle of time. John was not there in the beginning. Amen. Amen. But he wanted to introduce Jesus. The living logos of God. The living word of God. Don't forget that the Bible makes us to understand that the, he said the word that I speak to you he says they are life and what? And spirit. It's Apostle Paul that wrote, I think, writing to the Philippians. He says that the word I speak to you are not letters, but spirit. He says, for the letters kill it, 
but the spirit does what gives understanding the word of god john chapter one now john introducing jesus as the living word of god went back by the spirit of god to the beginning of time and he says in the beginning was what the word that means the word existed in the beginning he says and the word was with god and that on a careful look the word himself was god he says the same was in the beginning with god you see in this verse two verses alone uh, is wrapped a mystery that i looked and i saw the word then i cross-examined with carefully and i saw that the word was with god then on a careful look i cannot tell the difference between god and the word that means that god is his word amen i know the bible says that he exalts his word more than what more than his name because his word is his, his being his word is his personality his word is his personality he says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made so nothing was made outside of him in him was life that life that you want to live in him is life so if you truly want to find life you come into him because in him is life and the life hey was the light of men you remember where we started the word and god there's no difference he is the word the word is him and everything was made by him nothing exists outside of him nothing absolutely he says all things were made by him and without him was nothing made in him there is life life resides in him amen you, you see you need to pay attention to this is not life jesus was going to say i am the way the truth and the life right but it's not just life he himself is the life or what am i saying in him is life that means that if you must find life you must come into him amen you must come into him if you must find life and then he says that life was the light of men now if you bring these side by side what the scriptures that says behold darkness covers the earth and gross darkness does what cover the people now you will understand that in that scripture it splits it into two darkness covers the earth but a greater darkness covers the people you know why the earnest expectation of the creature the bible says waits eagerly for what the manifestation of the sons of god remember that scripture you know we started from the fact that to be a son or to be an heir is different from being a child right now the expectation of the creature everything that god created wait for the manifestation of the sons of god not of the children of god amen if you've given your life to jesus we are all god's children maybe i should 
tell us a bit in clear terms the difference. The spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Romans. We are children of God. So, what qualifies you to be children of God or a child of God is giving your life to Jesus. So, when you come to Jesus, when you come to Christ, you become a child of God. But the journey is not expected to end here. The bottom line of what I'm saying is that God expects you to grow from being a child to becoming a son or becoming an heir. To becoming someone who can represent him in his full stature. To become someone to whom he can delegate authority. Amen. Amen. Physically speaking, how many of you, when you were three or five years old, can your parents leave only you at home and commit everything at home onto your hand and say, we are going out, you take charge of everything. How many? Is it that they dress you up, lock up the house and take you along? Or they find somebody who is much more matured and much more responsible that will come and take over you at home. Are we getting it? And they commit you into the hand of that person. Literally, an ear remains a child. And so we cannot commit to him, even though the house is his house. We cannot leave the house in his hand. Amen. But as you grow up and you are able to make decisions, they begin to delegate certain authorities into your hands. Amen. And so, at some point, they can even leave your younger siblings in your care and say they are going out and they are sure you can take care of them. Amen. So, we are expected to grow. So, there is a difference between a child and being a son. It's, it's, sonship is that point where you can be delegated with authority. You can now act. It's as if committing the power of atony into your care. Amen. But there is no parent, there is no father who is going to commit power and authority into any child's hand or any son's hand if he is not sure that you will act in his best interest? That's exactly that's where we are going. That if you are if he's not sure you will act in his best interest, if he's not sure that you will not misuse the authority. You will not misuse the power. You will not misuse the dominion. That you will not abuse that which has been committed into your hands. And the best way to build you into that stature is to continue from time to time, infuse you with his words. Amen. It's the same with God. That we come to the fullness of the point where God knows. He says, let this word dwell richly in you. That God, that we can get to the point where God can trust us. And I'm saying that our growth must be predicated upon the word of God. Amen. Amen. That the word of God becomes the guiding principle. That the word of God defines the oppressions of our life. That we live within the dictate of his word. And then he says that in him, John chapter 1 back, verse 4, he says, in him was life and the life was with the life, was the life was the light of men. 
You know, I was quoting the scripture that says, darkness cover the people, gross darkness cover the earth. And I was saying that the reason a bigger darkness cover men, right, is because the creature, everything in the world, in the earth, wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. That if the sons of God can manifest, that passage says that creation will be delivered from the bondage of corruption. Amen. Amen. So, in an attempt not to make it easy for creation to grow, the, deli the, the deliverer of creation has a bigger bondage than creation. It's a craftiness of the devil to perpetually keep creation at bay. Amen. That when your problem is bigger than the creation you want to liberate, you will not have time to say you want to liberate someone when you yourself you have not been liberated. Amen. And that's why when you see people who have truly become liberated, you will see that the impact that they have on creation is a lot. Amen. 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 <clears throat> so the creation is waiting that one day the sons of God will be liberated. And when the sons of God are liberated, the creation will be delivered. But the sons of God must be formed. And unfortunately, a lot of people who are supposed to grow into sonship remain perpetually as children. Because we do not understand that we must break free. So, in him is the light. And that light, and that life was the light of men. That we must seek life from the word of God, the word of life as it is called, and that that, that life or that word must become light unto us. Amen. Now, let me say this. I hope we all know that the fact that you have access to the Bible and you are reading does not automatically mean that it is impacting you. Amen. You can, you can read the Bible. You can even study it like letters. You may be able to quote it but the question will be, are you being transformed? Amen. That our lives must be transformed as a result of our interaction with the word of God. That exactly is the proof that you are interacting with the word of God. That you are being transformed. That you are being reconfigured. You are being changed into the image of him whom you are beholding in the word of God. And that song, that hymn writer says, well, I've, he says, well, I've been to the river. He says, I've been baptized. I've been washed in the blood of the lamb. He says, I've been changed from the creature that once I was and redeemed is now my name. Then he went on and says, I've been changed. I'm a newborn now. All my lives have been rearranged. What a difference it made when the Lord came and stayed in my life. Oh yes, I've been changed. That change is the proof that you met God through his word. Amen. 
don't forget that i said the ultimate is that god wants you to be like him amen and the, the means of communicating his will his principles his ideologies his values his propositions to you the surest way that everybody has access to is the word of god through his word and that as we continue to interact like Ephesians 4.19 says we do not become Christ is not fully formed in us in a day it does not mean that we give our life to Jesus and we automatically become perfect in him amen but that day by day as we interact and commune with his word we are being refined. We are being purified. We are being sanctified. And we are being changed gradually. Unto becoming like Christ. The Christians were first referred to... The apostles or the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. And according to the account of the Bible... He says they've been there for about a year. And the people of Antioch watched them and said, These are little Christ. They are like Christ. They act, they do, they behave, they go about doing like Christ we do. Amen. But they didn't get to that point in a day. It was a journey. But at some point, people looked at them and said, mm -mm, something has been formed in these people. These people are like Christ. They have become an image of Christ. That they say you are, they are looking for Christ. And you can say, okay, you may not be able to see Christ physically, but see that man. Amen. That is the ultimate. If we will get to this point, there are certain things that we must know. There are certain things that we must know. That one, the word of God is superior to anything, any thought, any ideology, any wisdom we may think we have gathered. And you know, I said something earlier that when you come to any point in time, when there is something, maybe an action or a course of action you're about to take that stands face to face with the word of God, that you must come to the point where at the point you find out that this is standing against the word of God, you are ready to drop it and hold the word of God through. Amen. And then let's read a scripture and I may begin to wrap up on this note because of our time. It's a short one. But it's a scripture I think we need to read before we wrap up. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We quote this scripture a lot. We, we quote these scriptures a lot. And I want us to see it in a different light today. Especially we quote this scripture <laughs> when we are praying warfare prayers. And yes, it has an application in that. But 
Let's pay attention to what he says. I will read from verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. So, though we exist in the flesh, though the things we are doing, we are doing it in the flesh. But, the warfare that we are fighting is not fought in the flesh. Right? Now, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Stronghold. Casting down imaginations and every eye thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into every captivity or captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Then verse 6 says, and having in readiness to revenge all the disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. That means that we will judge every disobedience when our own obedience is what is complete now but my emphasis is on verse five is a casting down imaginations and every item that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ so there are certain things he's addressing there he's addressing imaginations is addressing everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and he says every thought is being brought to the obedience of Christ. Let me tell you the truth. You see those things he's talking about? It's not just about the enemy. It's not just about the witches and wizards. It includes your own thought. It includes your own imaginations. And it includes everything you do that are against the will of God. Amen. I hope you know that even as a believer, sanctified, thoughts can emanate from inside of you that are against the will of God. Amen. Amen. That you can have imaginations that are contrary that what God that, contrary to what God is saying. Amen. So when you quote these scriptures, I, I think I've said something like this here before that there are times we pray and God does not answer us because answering those prayers may mean disaster for ourselves. Amen. Imagine that you are the one coming up with thoughts and imaginations that are against what God is saying. And you are quoting this scripture and you are praying that God should demolish. Such sources. Or God should destroy where do you know you know you know, it, it's a recipe for disaster. And God will just be looking at you that. And in his mercy, he will not answer you. Because it's going to be destruction for you that you are praying. And this is one aspect of the word of God that we don't pay attention to. That we can be the hindrance to what God is saying about our lives. Amen. Amen. So we must know that the word of God is superior and then we must know that the word of God can challenge anything and everything. Even our thoughts and our imaginations. And like I said, those thoughts and imaginations will come. But when they come and this is where that scripture becomes applicable. That let the word of God dwell richly. 
in you. Amen. Amen. You see, one of the one of the most basic ways that God talks to people, I will still say it's, too, it's still through His Word. But you see, it's not everybody that is going to hear God or the blue voice. I mean, it's not everybody that is, some people do, but it's not everybody that is going to hear that audible voice. And it's not even everybody that God will communicate to through dreams. Dreams are good through dreams or visions or anything like that. You see, some of us, when we are praying, and this is where interacting and knowing the word of God richly is very important. So you are praying. And as you are praying, you know, the Bible says that the spirit of God will remind you all things. When you read the Bible at times, pay attention. It says it will remind you. You can't be reminded of what you do not know. Amen. For you to be reminded of a thing, it means you must have come in contact with that thing before. If you have not come in contact with it before, there is no how they want to remind you. So, and when you are praying at times, the Spirit of God is looking for a scripture that will guide you on what you are praying about. And he's searching in your mind for something to prompt and, and spring up in your spirit. If you are rich in the word of God, then there will be things to steer up from within you. And then you are praying and you begin to see two, three scriptures that align, bubbling in your spirit. It could be that Amen. Amen. And you continue to pray. Now, such a scripture may be pointing you to the fact that, yes, I have shown you, I will perform it. But it's not yet time. Just wait. Amen. Amen. You may be praying for a promotion where you are currently. Maybe at a job, you are praying for a promotion. And as you are praying, scriptures like, if the old covenant do not have blemish, there will be a need for a new one. Start bubbling in your spirit. You should continue to pray, but it may begin to point to you that promotion will come, but it may not be where you are currently. Amen. Amen. So, but if, if you do not have anything within you that the Spirit of God will remind you of, and then the Spirit of God comes and you are praying it through, through, and he wants to help you. But he's brooding over your heart to find a scripture, to find something that has been written to to remind to to prompt you in the in the, in the right direction and everything there is pangolo amen everything in there is things that do not add up whiskey than the video at, at, at times it's it may not necessarily be scriptures of course, when I say that, it may not be expressly Bible passages. There are times you are praying and a particular song is in your spirit. A, I mean, a gospel song. You know, there are, there, are, there are songs that they may not be singing scriptures directly, but you know which scripture 
must have given birth to this thing. Amen. Imagine, whatever it is, imagine you are praying for something and after lengthy prayer, all of a sudden the songs like Tobechuku start bubbling in your spirit. It could begin to be a pointer to the fact that you should start giving thanks. Because whatever it is, is being settled. Amen. Amen. If you are praying and um, you know, and, and, and all of that. But the bottom line is that you must have interacted enough. Let this world dwell richly in you. You know, it's Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and Joshua gave uh, a very interesting prescription. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. He, gives a, he gave a very interesting prescription. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. That means literally everywhere you go, be in connection with the word of God. He says, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. First of all, don't let this book depart from your mouth. That means speak it, chew it, eat it, digest it. Have something about the word of God going on at every time. He says, meditate, think about it. Reason it out, day and night. Regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstances, no matter what you are going through, be in connection with this word. He says, to the end that you observe what it says you should do. To the end that you do what he says you do, you don't do what he says you should not do, that you live according to what the word is saying. And then in the end he says, for then, when you do this, he says, you, yourself, you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. You know why? As you continue in that line, and you are doing, and you are being refined and being transformed, recreated to the image of God, you are becoming like Christ. And with the explanation of a, ear, a child and the father that I started with, the more you become like the father, the more he is able to delegate you. Amen. So, the more you become like Christ, the more he is able to give you power or authority to represent him. Amen. Amen. No father will um, send a child that he knows talks anyhow. Especially if the father is a person of reputation. Amen. The father is a person of reputation. He's not going to send a child who behaves anyhow to go and represent him in a, at a function and, you know, probably give a speech for him on his behalf or something. You will want somebody that can represent you, that you know will communicate values that are resemblance of yours when he, when he shows up in a place. Amen. I, I, I know, you know, you are, we know, we have, we have, we have, for example, preachers who, whose sons turn out to be wayward for one reason or the other. There's no, so, such a preacher, probably, you know, a man of God, well respected and all of that. And for some reasons, his son um, 
lives a wayward life, probably is not, has not even given his life to Jesus, and he's just there doing his own thing. And then the father has a, an invite to minister somewhere. And, he's, and he can't go physically by himself, and he needs someone to represent him. You think he's going to go and bring a son that smokes, womanizes, drink, and say, go and... Someone that can represent him in that capacity. Amen. So, and he will have to carefully select, whether a biological child or not, someone who can deliver what is expected of him to deliver at that function. Amen. So today, the Lord is calling us to come up either and to come to the point where we come to know him in his word. You can't claim to know God if your claims do not align with the word of God. The word of God remains the the the, the best scope to evaluate the claims of a man around what the person has known or has come to touch in God. Amen. Can we rise on our feet? And can we begin to pray and tell the Lord our Father, draw me to your word. Draw me to your word. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. Lord, draw me to your word. Can we open our mouth and pray? Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Lord, draw me to your word. Draw me, Lord, to your word. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I've emphasized it earlier. It's not the era, the speaker, or the, do, or the reader of the word that will be blessed, but the doers. Amen. It's not just about reading, but it's allowing the word to transform us. It says the word became life, and the life is the light of men. Can we pray and tell the Lord, Father, let your word become life and light unto me. Give to me that I may understand your word. Can we open our mouth and pray? Father, let your word become life and light unto me. Let your word become life and light unto me. Let your word become life and light unto me. Let me be transformed transformed into your likeness transformed into your image even by your word let your word become life let it become light unto me can we open our mouth and pray please pray please in the, in, the, in the growth and development of the Lord Jesus when he was on earth, 
the word played a crucial role the bible will tell us of how he went into the synagogue and he was there and he was studying even with the pharisees and the sadducees and the bible says they were looking for him and he said don't you know that i must go about doing the business of him who has sent me and it was in one of those occasions the bible said he opened the book of prophet isaiah and he saw where it is written concerning him and he began to read that which is written concerning him it is in studying this word of god that we can find our purpose that we find what has been written concerning us jesus opened studying he opened on in the book of isaiah where it is written concerning him and then he began to read and when he had read he said today this is fulfilled in your presence can we pray father let your word become life and light unto me let your word become life and light unto me in jesus name we have prayed let's take this song together you're all i want you're all i ever needed you're all i want lord you're all i want help me lord help me know you are here you're all i want lord you're all i want. oh you're all i want lord you're all i ever need you're all i want lord i want help me lord help me know you are here draw me close to you never let me go hold on again to feel the world you are my desire no one else will do No one else will do. Unless can take your place. Feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find my way. Help me find my way. Bring me back to you. You're all Lord. You're all I want. You're all I want, Lord. You're all I ever need. You're all I want, Lord. Oh, help me, Lord. Help me know you are here. Can we tell the Lord, Father, help me know you are with me. Help me know you are always with me. Help me to live in the consciousness of your presence. Can we pray? Please pray. Please pray. Father, help me to live in the consciousness of your presence. Help me to know that you are with me. 
Help me to know that you are here. Help me to know that you are with me. Help me to know that you are here. Help me to live in the consciousness of your omnipresence. Please pray. Shalako si prata ena kaido sopia. Mae kae sopia la to sande kati ala barata. Sekete kete le bragado shetele bragada da 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 da. Reto zubrike tele bragada la balato si tele brada da da da. Help me know that my life, my being is in you. Help me to live with a consciousness of being in you. In the name of Jesus. Help me find my way. Bring me back to you. Lord, help me find my way. Bring me back to you, Lord. Help me find my way. Bring me back to you, Lord. Help me find my way. Bring me back to you. Oh, help me find my way. Bring me back to you, Lord. Help me find my way. Bring me back to. Ask the Lord to draw you close to Himself. Ask the Lord to draw you close to Himself. Ask the Lord to draw you close to Himself. In Him. Do I move, leave, have my being? I am nothing without him. Ask him that Lord draw me to you. Draw me to you. Draw me to you. Jeremiah chapter 9, the Bible says, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, nor the strong man glory in his strength. He said, But let him that glory, glory in this, that he know it. And he understand God. That he know it and he understand God. That means that the glory of the believer is in knowing and in understanding the ways of God. In knowing and understanding God. Can we ask the Lord, Father, help me to know you. You can't know him except he helps you. He says, to you it has been given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Until it is given to you to know. Until it is given to you to understand, you can't. If the Lord builds not a city, the builders, they work, they labor in vain. If he watches not over a city, the, the watchmen are awake but in vain. Can we ask the Lord, help me to know you. Help me to know you. Help me to know you. Bring me in unto you. Can we pray, please? Shalato sita lekatosa. Maena tire scoopy halato sandia. Shake a take a telebraga da 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 he says, I will give you another comforter who will teach you all things. Can we ask of the Lord, Father, as I go from here, let your spirit become my teacher. Let your spirit teach me your word. Teach me all things. Let your spirit begin to teach me. Let your spirit begin to teach me. Please pray. It is promised that the Spirit will teach you all things, will guide you into all fruit. Father, as I go, let your Spirit begin to teach me. Let your Spirit 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 teach me all things. All things. All things. Let your Spirit teach me. In the name of Jesus, pray. Haleba shan take a telebraga da 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 da
and to so bragada la gata la braga de lecate le braga da la balada la bush rekete kete lecate le braga da la kete le braga de lecate le brada da 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 bush mashata la braga da 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 bush and tell the braga da 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 bush maso bregete lecate le brada da 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 bush in the name of Jesus. Basun take a table this in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. We will soon be leaving. I just want to make some declarations and some prophetic prayers. Can we just pray in the spirit for one to two minutes? Every one of us, can we just charge ourselves in the spirit? Pray in the spirit for one to two minutes. Maso take a little bring in every thought and imagination to the subjection of the knowledge of God. Casting down every thought and heighting and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Neko so tema neka lava salamanis. Legata bale de 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 and I will give you rest. Masa ta 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 vale ka ta vale de 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 des. Jeke te ke te bosoko do bosoko do vale de de des. Maso ne ke te banen ka vale de 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 bosoko do vale des. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, move in our midst. Maso te banen ka ta vale ne se le ba na tania. Jeke te vole ne se le ba ne ka ta vale de 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 des. Shoko te bane ne de 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 bosso golo bale de de bonis mashala bale gadaba eh. There is somebody here. Your heart is so burdened, and it's because Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, somebody here. Your heart is so burdened because of money. Your heart is so burdened because of money. Now, I'm not saying that you are troubled because, no, I mean your heart is burdened. And as I was, as I, as I, I know who the person is actually. Now, because it's a very common prophecy. If I say the person should raise up his hand now, two or three people may raise up their hand, but I know who the person is. And the Lord said, I should tell you that come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy leading, and I will give you rest. The Lord will fix every issue. In fact, this person, just to be more specific, you are in debt. You are owing somebody money. And just in case you are following online, and this applies to you, I prophesy debt cancellation in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let doors of financial prosperity open to you now in the name of Jesus. The ones that you have been knocking on that have not opened and the ones that you do not expect, they are opening to you in the name of Jesus. Um, those of you that have been applying for a job and you don't know what's going on, I prophesy. If that job does not click, within the next week, a better one will come for both of you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In fact, it's going to click. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let every hindrance be removed. Amen. You will enjoy that job. And you will grow in every aspect of life. Amen. Father, we worship you. We decree and declare that every yoke, every oppression of darkness, every oppression of darkness in the life of anyone here is terminated now. Every wicked oppression against any one of us, we terminate and we frustrate now. Just begin to give the Lord thanks for what he has, the things he has done. Cast your bodies upon him. And just begin to thank him because he has solved it. The next time we come here, 
Many of you will have a testimony. Please take note of these things that I'm saying. The next time we come here, many of you will have a testimony. I don't know what it is that has been troubling your heart, but you will come back here next week Saturday with a testimony. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Let's pray for Broyemi that the Lord has used to richly bless us with his word. That the Lord will increase him in the name of Jesus. Virtue has come out of him that virtue will be replenished in the name of Jesus. The utterance that the Lord has given to him will be increased. The grace upon him will be increased. The wisdom of God in his life will be increased in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. If you have an offering, you can bless your offering. Um, and we are going to cast our offering um, now. Father, we thank you for the opportunity you've given to us to give. We ask, Lord, that you bless our offerings. The word of Lord says, and to Abel and his offering, God had no respect. Lord, we ask that today you will have respect to our offerings. Some of us are giving not out of abundance, but in spite of the fact that there is no abundance. Lord, I ask that you bring us to a point where we will give out of abundance. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So you can cast your offerings. Next week, by God's grace, we'll be here, same time, same venue. Please invite a friend. Reach out to our brethren that are not here today. Some of our brethren are not here. Bolaji, Farouk, that's Kelvin. And every other person that is not here, Femi was not around because he's out of town. He has an exam. That's why you, you didn't see him. But please, reach out to our brethren. Toby, Damilola, those sisters, call them. Amen. Tofumi, you here? Call them and reach out to them. The Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. And please invite new people to join this meeting. The Lord is doing wonderful things in our midst. Watch out for your testimony. And let me tell us something here, once and for all. It is not a good thing that when you, we come and we pray about something, and God does it, and you now forget to testify. You are People that are not grateful. That's, they are the ones that don't. The way, one of the ways you show your gratitude to God is not to go and thank Him in, in, the, in the bedroom. Amen. Is to thank him and glorify him openly. Amen. You know why? You know why? Because this this world is a place of warfare. The devil is always trying to convince people that God cannot help them. And whenever God helps you, you should be a test. He said, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. What does it mean to declare the works of the Lord? God did something for you, and you what? You talk about it. Amen. That's how to live. Oh. God is doing something for you and you are hiding. It is not good. Amen. It's not good. The leper, Jesus healed 10 lepers. Only one came back to testify. I hope you know that that's what happened. He came back to testify. If he did not come back, wouldn't, it would have been as if Jesus did not heal them. There are many people that did, 10 lepers, only one came back to testify. And it was that one that received extra. Received extra blessing. If you remember that story. There is, a, there is an extra blessing for a testifier. So don't hide your blessings. You know, if a light, if you see candle, light, and you cover it, what will happen to the candle? It will die. Many times people extinguish their testimonies and their miracles. Because instead of them to acknowledge God, they hide it. God has not given us the spirit of fear and timidity, but of love. If you testify to the goodness of God, no devil can spoil your blessing. Amen. You know, someone say, Ah, you know, I don't want people to know so that they will spoil. Eh? <laughs> Except you are coming to show off in the name of testifying. But 
when you are testifying, you are not showing off. You are coming to testify of what God has done for you. You are coming, coming to acknowledge God for what he has done for you. Amen. Amen. So it is very, very important. When Jesus healed people, even the woman with the issue of blood that wanted to collect her healing and sneak away, is a lie. Jesus said, who touched me? Do you remember? You know, if Jesus did not do that, he would have just collected the healing and gone. And nobody would have known. Jesus said, somebody touched me. Meanwhile, many people were pr- pressing him. And then he identified her. See, when God does something for you, testify it. A, there's a spiritual principle there. It's, it's a, it, it brings about a multiplier effect. Because in the kingdom of God, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So whenever you are testifying, are you with me? You are giving, you are helping to boost other people's feet. So your blessing is multiplying because God blessed you, but it didn't just stop there. You are using your blessing to multiply people's feet. Amen? Do you know how many people's feet were, was boosted when they saw that woman with the issue of blood? That she was healed? You know how many people's feet? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because without faith, very little will happen. So when you see the finger of God, acknowledge it. And you will see the hand of God. Amen. This is not just for what encounter. Oh. Let it be your way of living. You see, we have this prayer meeting in Stream Globe. Stream Globe Bible study. And there are some people that testify in that prayer meeting. They are, they are the ones always testifying. One day I say, ah, is it only these people that God is doing something for? Amen. They are the ones that testify and they are the ones that always testify. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So please, let's, don't forget, reach out to our brethren. Reach out to our brethren. It's, this is a fellowship. So we must let brotherly love continue. We must know one another. Ask them where they... Precious, are you hearing me? You have a phone. You know how to make call. You've called me. Call Kelvin. What happened that we didn't see you? Call Bolaji. Amen. It's important. It's part of our Christian fellowship. Yes. Come and share your testimony. God bless. Yes. A round of applause for him. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Let me thank the Lord with a, with a song first before we give my testimony. I've been thinking, what am I gonna give God? I will praise Him all the day, all the night long. So I decided to roll this praise song. I've been thinking, I don't know what I'm gonna give. I've been thinking, what am I gonna give God? I will praise Him all the day, all the night long. So I decided to roll this praise song. I've been thinking, I don't know what I'm gonna give. Everything I got in this life is God. He raised me from nobody and established me. He raised me up and made my ground so solid. Every day of my life, give God glory. Can't forget that we are raised from the dungeon. Where thou is desolated and abandoned. For my wrong spread to God, they should pardon. Now I raised my little boy from this poor ground. So I've been thinking, what am I gonna give God? I will praise Him all the day or the night long. So I decided to roll the praise song. I've been thinking, I don't know what I'm gonna give. Praise the Lord. Brethren, I'm thanking God so gratefully because God has been so faithful from, uh, to me ever since I was a child up to today. I'm always grateful to God because he has given me an abundant talent and many things to do, which I always do, even when I receive no training, but I can do those things perfectly as if I have gone there before. So I thank God for the destiny of art that he gave to me. I've never been to, where, to a place where 
uh, studied at before, but I thank God it's a very great thing and a very great gift that the Lord has given to me. Each time he will fill me with different imaginations and thoughts and I could be able to bring it to physical world that men can make use of it and other things. I thank him for all he has done because it's a great thing to my life. So I'm thanking God, my brethren. Help me to praise the Lord and shout hallelujah in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I may your talents continue to increase in efficiency and may you be a blessing truly to humanity. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Uh, it's not a, um, a recent testimony, but it, um, I should have given a testimony. There was a, probably last uh, month I was here, probably last month on Saturday like this, and you actually prayed for, I think, open doors of financial, blah, 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 like you prophesied, you decree. And then, uh, I think that's a week, that's a week, I, in short, like I received a lot of money that week. <laughs> Someone actually called me and was like, ah, Apostle, please send me your account details. I was like, ah, details, why? Do you want me to get something for you? He said, ah, just send me. And he sent it. And I was like, ah, um, this money is much than you sending. to." I said, what do you want me to get for you? He said, ah, as I was praying, and God said uh, uh, that this money that I want to sow, that I should just send it to you. So I was like, wow. So I should have given you testimony, but I was busy that Saturday. And like Saturdays, most times I'm always engaged. So, so as we were talking, I was guilty of not, I was, I was like, ah, I have to share this testimony um, the, the following uh, Saturday, but quite unfortunate that I was not present. So that's why I'm sharing the testimony. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Can we shout a big hallelujah to the Lord? Praise the Lord. Some of those words of prophecy that come here, <laughs> me, I used to, sometimes I used to wish that I am in the congregation to receive them. And there are some that I have received. Amen. Brother, me can testify. Brother, me, you, ah. God is here. Oh. He's here. And when a word comes forth, don't take it for granted. Like the ones that we pray today now, please don't take it for granted. Don't have any doubts in your heart that it will happen as we have declared. Amen. And you will see the manifestation of those things that have been declared in Jesus' mighty name. I don't believe we have any other testimony. Okay. Um, by the grace of God, we will be here next week. We have water baptism for some people that have not been baptized in water. Um, the date will be communicated next week when we will do water baptism. I think there are three of you that have not been baptized in water. It's not good. Amen. It's not good. That you are a Christian and you are not on a sick bed. You should be baptized in water. Water baptism is very, very important. All right. Let's share the grace together as we close. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Praise the Lord.